because I was afraid that you wouldn't understand the principle. I lent you the analogy of ice and water. Don't set upon it and suppose that dust and emptiness can be transformed into water and ice, thinking that way is just peeling another head on top of your head. Such attachments are fundamentally non-existent. Yet, when I explained the principle to you, you added one more level of attachment. If you want so much attachment, I have no way to teach you to understand the doctrine of the non-duality of emptiness and form. So, you must wait until you look into it yourself and wake up to the principle. Perhaps then you will understand. Although there are all kinds of forms dharmas, in general, the form skanda can be described in three broad classifications. One form which can be seen and uh, complemented called complementary sabratika and visible samidasana. Two form which can be complemented but not seen called complementary and invisible anidasana three form which can neither be seen nor complemented called non-complementary apratika and invisible the three kinds of form dharmas are discriminated within the fields of the six objects of perception size sounds smells taste objects of touch and dharmas what are complementary visible forms. They are dharmas which you can see and with which you can form a dharma pair. People, self, other and living beings, mountains, rivers and great earth, and the 10,000 phenomena all have visible form. So they are all called complementary visible dharmas and are classified among the form dharmas. As to complementary invisible forms, you can pair yourself with them, but you cannot see them. They include sounds, smells, tastes, objects of touch, all of which can be complemented but not seen. For instance, to pair yourself with a sound which is an object of perception is to enter into a complementary relationship with what you hear. Oh, this sounds good, or that doesn't sound so good. You pair yourself with it and discriminations arise in the conscious mind, yet you are unable to see the sound. Tell me, what color is sound? Green, yellow, red or white? It doesn't have color. Well then, is it square or round? Again, you can't answer. No substantial visual appearance comes into being from the sound. Thus, the form dharmas is this of this category are called complementary and invisible. Sound is a kind of form that is an object of perception that is it belongs to the form skanda of the five skandhas form, feeling, cognition, formation and consciousness. And so it is with smells. You can pair yourself with smells which are objects of perception and know that there is a certain fragrance yet what does it look like? You cannot see it. Nevertheless, it still exists, but, still, but since it has no visible appearance, you are merely conscious of it. You recognize it without seeing it. You use your tongue to taste. Only the tongue can tell the palatable from the unpalatable. But do the five flavors, salt, sweet, bitter, hot, and salty, have a visible appearance? What do they look like? You cannot see them. You cover your body with fine silks, which are warm and comfortable. Their smooth touch on your skin gives you a very natural, happy feeling. What is the feeling like? The object of touch, which is the object of perception. What visible appearance does it have? You can't see it. An object of touch, which is the object of perception, is also a complementary, invisible form which you can pair yourself with but cannot see. It. Perhaps sights, sounds, smells, taste, and objects of touch, the first five of the six objects of perception, 
have passed by or perhaps they persist in your mind consciousness where they all leave a shadow which is what is the shadow your eyes for example see your color and your mind consciousness knows what i just saw was red i also saw yellow and green although the color has gone by its trace remains in the mind consciousness only its shadow is left the same is true of sounds smells taste and objects of touch maintain that a certain phenomenon exists and it has already gone past maintain that it does not exist yet you remember it although the objects of perception are no, no longer present although the events are past and the feelings gone by shadows are stored in the mind consciousness and these are called dramas the sixth of the six objects of perception it belongs to the form skanda but is classified as non-complementary and invisible because as soon as you try to pair yourself with a drama which is an object of perception you find that it has already disappeared and no longer exists you say that it doesn't exist yet there in your mind consciousness it still persists as if it were carved on a wooden board the shadow exists but there is no way to see it hear it or seek out its genuine character thus the shadows of the first five objects of perception fall into the mind consciousness and become non-complementary invisible forms the quotation is from the final verse of the diamond sutra all conditioned dramas are like dreams illusions bubbles shadows like dew drops and a lightning flash contemplate them thus feeling cognition formation and consciousness sutra so to uh, feeling cognition formation and consciousness shariputra all dhammas are empty of characteristics they are not produced not destroyed not defined not pure and they neither increase nor diminish commentary the form skanda is this way and so too are the other four skandhas feeling cognition formation and consciousness they are of the same nature as form just as the form does not differ from emptiness so too feeling does not differ from emptiness emptiness does not differ from feeling feeling itself is emptiness emptiness itself is feeling cognition does not differ from emptiness emptiness does not differ from cognition cognition itself is emptiness emptiness itself is cognition formation does not differ from emptiness emptiness does not differ from formation formation itself is emptiness emptiness itself is formation consciousness does not differ from emptiness emptiness does not differ from consciousness consciousness itself is emptiness emptiness itself is consciousness therefore the sutra text says so to a uh, feeling cognition formation and consciousness are the same as emptiness and form i have spoken about feeling cognition formation and consciousness many times from where do feeling cognition formation and consciousness come and to what place do feeling cognition formation and consciousness go ultimately what are feeling cognition formation and consciousness we should understand what their substance is for through understanding their substance we will understand their function when we understand their function we will know how to defeat them we will employ some rather superficial levels of reasoning to explain this what is form the body is included among the form dramas since it is form it is called the form body your form body has an appearance but when you seek for its origin you will find that it is empty these two i have explained many times when the four great elements namely 
earth, water, fire, and wind unite, the body comes into being. This is what is meant by having a form. Working together, the elements establish a, co a cooperation. The cooperation comes into being from the four conditioned causes, earth, which is characterized by solidity and durability, water which is characterized by moisture, fire which is characterized by warmth, wind which is characterized by movement. When the four conditioned causes disperse, each has a place to which it returns. Therefore, the body becomes empty. As the sutra says, form does not differ from emptiness. Emptiness does not differ from form. Form does not differ from emptiness. This is true emptiness. Emptiness does not differ from form. This is wonderful existence. True emptiness is wonderful existence. And wonderful existence is true emptiness. It is not the case that outside true emptiness, there is a separate wonderful existence. It is also not the case that moving wonderful existence to one side reveals true emptiness. What is true emptiness is just wonderful existence. What is wonderful existence is just true emptiness. Before the creation of the universe, before one's parents bore one in the substance of the, the original phase, the Buddha and living beings are not the slightest bit different. Thus the sutra says, form does not differ from emptiness. Emptiness does not differ from form. The four great elements transform themselves and unite into a form body, a um, corporeal body which has a visible appearance. Once the body manifests, it likes pleasurable feelings. There are three kinds of feelings which correspond to the three kinds of suffering. Feelings of suffering, feelings of happiness, feelings which are characterized by neither suffering nor happiness. Are you afraid of suffering? The more you fear suffering, the more suffering there is. So you, you reply, I'm not afraid of suffering. Is the suffering diminished? Because you don't fear suffering, although the suffering is no less, it can be said that it does not exist. For if you do not fear suffering, then at its origin there is no suffering. If you are afraid of suffering, the more suffering there is, the more you are aware of it, the more you are aware of suffering, the more and more and more suffering there is. When you experience the feeling of suffering, you feel that of all the people in the world, you are the one who suffers most. Everything is felt to be suffering. I have a disciple who feels this way. When he lectures, he lectures on suffering. When he eats, he likes to eat bitter things. In Chinese, the character Hu means both bitter and suffering. But when it comes to doing work, he doesn't like suffering and he's annoyed by hard work. He likes happy work. In this world, happy work is rarely encountered. And if it is, it is simply the result of having suffered. Feelings of happiness refer to all kinds of pleasure. You feel that owning a car will make you happy, but after you buy the car, you want an airplane. When you own an airplane, you want to buy a sailboat and you want to take a rocket to the moon. But you get sick and there are no doctors on the moon, so you die on the moon and become a moon ghost. Is that being happy or is it suffering? You have become the ghost in the moon. Happy feelings are a cause of suffering. Say, some say they are pleasurable, but they fill up your mind with bigger and bigger pieces of dirt. You ask, how can all those kinds of false thinking stop? Should one have feelings which are characterized by neither happiness nor, nor suffering? One could say, I don't wish to suffer and I also don't wish to be happy. I just want to make it through one very ordinary life and forget it. Not bad. In this one life, you can say that you broke even. You did business and didn't make a profit, but you didn't take a loss either. You didn't make money, but you didn't lose any. 
the initial assets were 50 million and you still have 50 million no gain and no loss that is what is meant by feelings which are characterized by neither happiness nor suffering but you wasted effort and did business in vain you came into this world all confused and you leave it all confused your wealth has not been well established and your accounts have been mismanaged consequently this is called coming and going in confusion it earns more confusion and there is no interest in it as for cognition you certainly must have false thoughts if you want enjoyment. You can't be without it. You, how can I think of a way to buy a car? How I can buy a beautiful home? How can I think of a way to buy a steamship, an airplane? Your false thoughts fly back and forth and your hair turns white. Why? It turns white from false thinking. As soon as you begin false thinking, your hair starts turning white. When you lie in your bed at night, you have a thousand plans as I have said before. Sometimes you get up early to act on them. Sometimes sleeping seems nice and you just sleep. Formation is basically to act out karma, that is to really act upon your false thinking. Now I will tell you about the five skandhas as they are found in your body. 1. The body is a form skanda. 2. Once you have a form skanda, you then have feelings of enjoyment and pleasure. 3. You want pleasure and so you give rise to false thinking, which is cognition. How can I get what I want? How can I actually indulge in pleasure? 4. You have to go and do it. This is formation. 5. Acting requires a certain amount of wisdom. A consciousness which is a kind of small intelligence about a hair's worth. If you live in a small wisdom loft, then you only take care of small wisdom undertakings with your small wisdom. A small bit of wisdom in a small, small loft. Can there be any great development? No, no big business is done by the very small company in the very small loft. You must have wisdom to help you actually carry out your plans. When you have a plan and actually put it into effect, then you can accomplish the aim of your false thinking and obtain the pleasure you sought. You then supply your body with what it needs and seeks. Your body achieves its aims. Oh, enjoyment! Ah, the enjoyment lasts about five minutes because of the excessive exertion. Your blood vessels rupture and then death comes. You can say that the enjoyment didn't last long. What was it all about? It was just the five skandhas. The five skandhas are just five ways of uniting, of working together to open a company. The company once opened, opens again and again, again and again, in a lecture on the Sutra of the Past Vows of Earth Star Bodhisattva. I explained it this way. The scandal company grows everywhere like a white vine which is never cut. Once opened, the five scandals corporation, Inc., always stays open, always feeling that there is hope. What hope? Ah, this life, I didn't make money but wait until next life and I will be able to make some. Who can know whether there will be even less capital in the next life? It's just like gambling. You expect to win money, but as soon as you pull the handle on the slot machine, the money falls down into the machine and the house wins. It didn't last long. At first, you expected to win, but you lost. It is the same with your body, yet you gamble with it. Why don't you want to gamble with it as if it were money? Because you haven't seen through it. You don't know that there are so many subtle, wonderful, and inconceivable states between heaven and earth. There are all these states, and yet you cannot move forward even a single step. But there is one step that is even more esoteric, even more profound. What should you do? Just make the greed in your mind disappear. That is to neither make money nor lose it. 
That way you can preserve a little of your original share in order to cultivate. That is what is called returning to the original source. Then you can return home. This lecture series was given at the Buddhist lecture hall at 125 Waverly Place, San Francisco. This reference is to a portion of the BLH where students studied. To show yi tian ben fen, the phrase is also sometimes used to imply mind your own business or be content with your own lot. Feeling, cognition, formation, and consciousness. Verse Feeling, cognition, formation, and consciousness are like emptiness and form. Again, he calls Shariputra, pay attention, listen. All dharmas are empty of characteristics, lacking of nature of their own, not produced, not destroyed. They silently pervade, not defined, not pure. They are separate from corrupting filth. They neither increase nor diminish, enlighten the dark and mysterious middle. In the pure and deep ultimate silence, all creation is transcended. A sudden awakening to the original perfect fusion of self and dharmas. Commentary The three kinds of form complementary, visible form, complementary, invisible form, and non complementary, invisible form were explained above. Encompassed by those three general classifications is the further distinction of even kinds of form dharma. The other five perceptual faculties, the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body, and in addition, the six objects of perception, sights, sounds, smells, taste, objects of touch, and dharmas. The five perceptual faculties pair themselves with the six perceptual objects. Taken together, they comprise the eleven kinds of form dharma which are found within the three more general classifications of form. To review all the defiling phenomena in front of your eyes, all that has visible appearance is a complementary, visible form. The four kinds of form dharma which are complementary and invisible are sounds, smells, tastes, and objects of touch. The perceptual objects of, mind, of the mind, that is dharmas, are also part of the form dharma and are classified as non complementary invisible form. When you try to locate this kind of form, you see nothing and have no awareness of its presence. Yet, you know about it in your thoughts. In what sense can a perceptual object of the mind can called a form dharma? The five perceptual objects which appear before you leave behind shadows in your mind. The shadow of perceptual objects of the mind, the mind that defines us, um, also form a kind of form which is inside mind consciousness. Form itself is emptiness, and feeling, thinking, action, and consciousness are also empty. They are the same as form which is an object of perception. Where does the form which is an object of perception come from? The pairing of the six forms which are objects of perception. With the six perceptual faculties produces the six consciousnesses in which there arises discrimination of the form. The specific nature of each of the six perceptual faculties, i.e. the consciousness associated with each, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, feeling, and knowing, is empty. Since the nature is empty and the form is manifest from the nature, Form is also empty. In other words, in form there is emptiness. You do not have to leave form to find emptiness. Now, I shall talk about form and the seeing nature. Which of the two would you say exists first? If form exists first, then how can it manifest when there is no seeing? If you say that seeing exists first, then where does the seeing nature go when there is no form? So, if there is no form, the seeing nature has no function. Therefore, both the seeing nature and form are fundamentally empty. You should not give rise to a one-sided nature. 
give in to attachment and become attached to the idea that existence itself is existence and emptiness itself is emptiness. The original non-duality of emptiness and existence is true emptiness and wonderful existence giving birth to wonderful functioning. Some people who do not understand the Buddha Dharma see emptiness and think that it is certainly empty. They see existence and think that it is certainly existent. Not understanding the principle of the non-duality of emptiness and existence, they seek outside of themselves. They look for another head to put on top of the head they already have, and they get caught up in false thinking. When the Buddha spoke the Heart Sutra, he proclaimed the wonderful Dharma, the principle of the non-duality of emptiness and existence. Feeling, cognition, formation, and consciousness are like emptiness and form. Again, he calls Shariputra, pay attention, explanation of the meaning of 70, the text of the text, listen. All dharmas are empty of characteristics, lacking a nature of their own. The five skandhas, form, feeling, cognition, formation, and consciousness, are a general categorization of all dharmas, which can be, can be further divided into 100 dharmas, 11 form dharmas, rupa, 8 mind dharmas, sita, 51 dramas belonging to the mind, say Tasika. 24 non interacting dramas, Sita, Viprayuka, Rukta, and 6 unconditioned dramas, Yasamsta. The 11 form dramas, which were discussed above, refer to the pairing of the 5 perceptual faculties with the 6 perceptual objects. The eight mind dharmas are these the eye consciousness, the ear consciousness, the nose consciousness, the tongue consciousness, the body consciousness, the mind consciousness, the defiling mind consciousness, manas, and the storehouse consciousness, alaya.